A license plate recognition camera, or an LPR, is a critical tool for anyone looking for a security camera to collect license plate numbers. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Tyler from Nelly Security, and in today's video, we are gonna be talking about the Uniview LPR. We will talk all about installation, tune in the settings for optimal license plate recognition, and we will integrate this with our Uniview NVR for quick and easy license plate search and retrieval. This is a big camera. We've got a lot of stuff to go over, so let's jump right into the video. Just a quick note before we jump in, this video is gonna be all about setup and installation. If you haven't seen our first video on this LPR, you should go watch that first because it's going to give you all the information that you need to know about this camera. I will leave the link to that down in the description below. Now, let's talk about installation. For a topic like this, it's gonna be easy to get lost in the woods talking about the Pythagorean theorem and Sokotoa and all these other trigonometry concepts that you haven't thought about since high school. But I thought, you know, there's gotta be a better way. So we built this tool, which you can find on our website at nellysecurity.com slash LPR hyphen tool. Here, you'll be able to see all of the recommended specs from Uniview, which is all gonna be based on your road width. But since this camera has a 10 times zoom, you can get away with some configurations outside of these recommendations. It's all pretty common sense. For instance, you don't want your camera to be at too sharp of an angle or the license plate image might be warped. Try to get the camera as head on as possible. More important than positioning your camera is going to be narrowing down your field of view to a really tight choke point. The main concept here is to have your camera cropped in as much as possible so that the license plates take up a good majority of the field of view. Choke points are areas where cars move in a consistent and predictable way. Think parking lot entrances and exits, alleyways, roads, that kind of thing. We don't wanna point the camera at a wide area where cars can move about with some variability. Since we're zooming in on plates and we don't wanna miss any information, finding a good choke point is going to be critical. For our purposes in this video, we have our camera aimed at our driveway entrance. It's zoomed all the way in at this 47 millimeter focal length. Let's jump onto the web interface for this LPR and get it all set up for optimal license plate capture. All right, this next step might get a little complex because we do have to go into a few technical details. Uh, we're gonna be talking about video settings, uh, photo servers. If it sounds a little bit scary, don't worry. We've got some guides on our website to help you out and we're gonna walk you through the whole process right here in this video. Let me show you what I have pulled up here on our uh, Internet Explorer. First, we have our LPR. This interface looks a little bit different than what you're used to with the standard security camera, and we'll go over it a little bit. We're not gonna spend too much time here because primarily we're gonna be setting this up with an NVR. And that's the next tab I have pulled up here. This is our NVR 304-16X. This is the NVR that we're gonna be using both for recording video from our LPR, as well as setting up that photo server that I mentioned. Uh, and what the photo server is gonna do is allow the LPR and the NPR to communicate so that the LPR can send snapshots and the uh, text information of the license plate captures to the NVR. Again, we'll get into all of that in this video. The third tab I have pulled up here is our support page, support.nellysecurity.com. We have a ton of helpful guides on here. Our expert techs are creating new guides every week and uh, we have a lot of stuff on the LPR. So if you have any questions about how this works, definitely check out these guides. Hopefully you'll find something that will answer your questions if we don't answer those in this video today. So the first thing I wanna do before I do anything else is get our video settings set up properly on our NVR. Uh, by default, this comes at about 25 frames per second, uh, but this camera can bump all the way up to 60 frames per second. And since we are gonna be dealing with moving vehicles, the more frames per second we have on this video, the better. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hop into setup come into video and audio. I'm gonna hop into video encoding and I'm gonna change this capture mode from 1920 by 1080 at 25 frames per second to 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. While I'm here in the video encoding page, I'm also gonna bump up this bit rate just a bit to 4096. The reason being this LPR does take quite a bit of resources. So if we can give it a little bit of a boost on the bit rate, 
that's gonna help with the uh, smoothness of the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. We have our frame rate set, we have our bit rate set. Let's hop back into the live view and see how this affected the video. And you can see this uh, video is now a whole lot smoother. Those vehicles are just gliding across the screen. Uh, there's a little bit of a jumpiness here, a little bit of a lag. That's actually normal with the web interface. And again, we don't recommend using this camera with the web interface alone. We are gonna be setting this up with an NVR and it's gonna work flawlessly on the NVR. You're not gonna see any of this jumpiness or this lagginess. So just keep that in mind as we are looking at the web interface. It's not gonna look perfect from here. This is a very resource intensive camera. So with that being said, let's go back into our setup menu and play around with the network. Right now it's set to obtain an IP address through DHCP. I'm gonna change this to static. I'm going to leave all the default settings the same and I'm gonna click save. Uh, I'm actually gonna go do the same exact thing for the NVR. I'm gonna go into setup. I'm going to go into network. Uh, this is a multi-NIC NVR, so just make sure you are on the NIC that's connected to your network, which in our case is NIC1. We are going to disable DHCP. We're gonna leave all the settings the same and click save. The reason I'm taking this off of DHCP is because the IP address is gonna be really crucial for the LPR and the NVR to be able to communicate. If our LPR changes IP addresses, if our NVR changes IP addresses, that's gonna mess everything up. So do yourself a favor, take this off of DHCP, give this a static IP address, and we will be off to the races. One last thing I'm going to do on both the LPR and the NVR before we jump into license plate configuration is uh, I'm gonna jump into maintenance and maintenance and we are going to uh, click on cloud upgrade for the NVR and we're going to check for an update. The reason I'm doing this is because the LPR is a relatively new camera. Some of these LPR features are pretty new. So especially if you have had your NVR for a while, you might wanna come in here, make sure that there are no upgrades available. If there are, definitely make sure that your NVR and your LPR are both updated to the latest firmware. We are going to detect a cloud upgrade. It's looking for one and no new version is detected. Our LPR and our NVR are both up to date. Let's configure this license plate capture. All right, as we stand right now, we are zoomed out on a pretty wide field of view. Cars can go pretty much anywhere they want. As we talked about before, we really need to get this field of view cropped into a choke point. So I'm just gonna click and hold on this zoom button, zoom all the way in. This camera has you know 4.7 to 47 millimeters. Zoom range, I'm going all the way into zoom factor of 10. Uh, this is how cropped in I want it to be because as a car drives through here and either they're turning left or they're turning right, we will be able to see their license plate fully in the view of this camera. And uh, in fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and hop outside and run through this myself so you can see what happens on the web interface as we start collecting plates. So as you can see, everything worked as intended. I drove past the LPR. It was able to see my license plate at this zoomed in choke point. Uh, and, it, and it did a few things. First, it's gonna show us this full snapshot image here. Uh, this is just the full screen snapshot of what it looked like when my car drove by. Next, it's going to show us a cropped version of the license plate so we can see the license plate in its full glory. Uh, if, it, if this is at an angle, it's gonna try to uh, skew the image and adjust it so that we can see it well. Next, it's going to convert the image of our license plate. Oh, we got another one here. Let's see if it does it. And there we go, we got a new license plate. And it's going to uh, take this text from the image, KGS061, and it's gonna turn it into uh, searchable text here, which we can see down in this table of data. We have the snapshot time, we have the plate type, trigger mode, it's gonna be vehicle detec uh, video detection for the most part, plate width, and it's gonna show us our plate number. We can click on entries down here in the table below to have them show up here in our sidebar, and that's pretty much how it works. Now, we've been playing with this license plate camera for a couple of weeks now. We've tried out a few different configurations, uh, so I already knew that the way it's set up now uh, would 
successfully capture license plates. If you're setting this up for the very first time, it's probably gonna take a little bit of a trial and error as you try to figure out what configuration is gonna work best for you and for your scenario. Let me show you a couple of these settings that you can play around with to really dial this in. And all of this can be done right here from the live view. First, we have the setup wizard, which is gonna open up this box and it's gonna allow you to adjust this uh, license plate detection area. You can uh, make this the whole screen if you want, just by dragging the corners of this box. Uh, or, you know, by making this smaller, putting this exactly where you know the license plate is gonna be, uh, it might reduce some false captures. You know, if a truck drives by with some uh, text, like a phone number or a company name on the side of the truck, uh, sometimes it might try to pull that in as a license plate. But if you uh, have this area focused just where the license plate is gonna be, that can really reduce your false captures by a lot. Uh, the false captures already are pretty reduced from other license plate cameras simply because uh, this isn't just text detection, it's actually vehicle detection. So when it detects your vehicle, it's going to look for the license plate uh, within that rectangular uh, square. If it sees other text outside of the borders of the license plate, it's not gonna recognize it as a license plate. Uh, you're going to notice uh, throughout this video with some of the examples we show that sometimes it still does pick up other text outside of the license plate. It's not 100% foolproof, but uh, compared to other license plate recognition cameras, the accuracy of determining whether or not text belongs to a license plate or not is actually really, really good on this camera. Something else we can do here is enable this horizontal reference for the license plate. This doesn't actually do anything for the detection. Uh, this is just for your reference so you can see as cars pass by uh, whether or not they are level. If you have to adjust this line too much to see the how level the license plates are, then you might need to adjust your configuration. Uh, a little bit of an angle is okay, but uh, just be mindful of that. Another option we have here is the trigger mode. We've only tested this out with the video trigger, but you can do this with a uh, an induction loop if you have the hardware available for that. Uh, you know, those uh, wires in the road when you pull up to a stoplight, it detects the metal from your vehicle, tells the stoplight that somebody's waiting. That's the same kind of technology you can use here with the LPR. When it detects the metal of a car passing by, it can trigger the license plate snapshot. Use that at your own risk. We haven't tested that out. Again, we've only done trigger by video. Trigger by video works really, really well. Uh, some other settings that you can play around with here are in this advanced menu. When you open this up, you can see you have a whole bunch of LPR settings to play with here. Vehicle detection sensitivity. If you notice that your camera is having a lot of false detections and is pulling the text off the side of vehicles or uh, other places other than a license plate, you can adjust this to bump down the sensitivity if you need to. Uh, we just leave this at five, it works well for us. Interfering character filter, you can enable this or disable this. And what that's going to determine is, you can see in our Oklahoma license plates, we have this little uh, Oklahoma icon between the letters. Lots of license plates have little icons like this somewhere. And uh, if you notice those icons are getting in the way of the license plate recognition, maybe the LPR thinks that those icons are letters or numbers, you can come in here to your advanced settings and you can enable this character filter. There's a threshold from 15 to 28, so you can play around with that. We're gonna leave this disabled because it doesn't really interfere with our license plate capture. The next setting that I wanna point out here is enable same plate output. Uh, if you turn this off, it's only going to detect a license plate one time. So if the same car drives past the camera multiple times with the same plate number, it's only going to register that as one capture. It's only gonna take one snapshot, only store one entry in the database. If you have this enabled, uh, it will take multiple captures of the same license plate number. And underneath the enable same plate output, we have the output interval in seconds. This is a very important setting, especially as you're testing out your LPR. We actually didn't know about this setting at first. And so what happened was I was testing out this LPR, driving past it multiple times, like six or seven times uh, back to back. And it would only take one license plate capture. It was always the first one. And uh, we thought there was something wrong with this LPR. We were getting frustrated with it. And then we realized, wait a second, it's set up to only take a picture of uh, the same license plate only once within a five minute period. So we bumped this down 
to 60. And uh, every minute I would drive through and we started having flawless captures. So uh, leave this around 60. If you go much lower than this, it will start taking multiple captures of the same license plate uh, at the same time. So for instance, you can see our license plate is pointed at a parking lot exit. So people pull up here, they stop. And sometimes it takes a while before they can turn. Uh, if you have this set too low, like we had this set to 20 for a while, and what was happening was we were getting the same picture of the same license plate uh, multiple times at once. So keep this at a low enough number that it's gonna be useful, especially while you're testing this out, but keep it high enough so you're not getting multiple entries. Cool. And that's pretty much all the settings that we need to adjust. Uh, right out of the box, this thing takes license plate images really well. It doesn't need a whole lot of configuration in most cases. Uh, I will show you a couple more settings that we have in our setup menu. If you click setup and go to smart, this is going to be all of our LPR features. So we have vehicle head only, which is disabled. We only have a requirements in Oklahoma for rear license plates. Uh, we don't actually have any front license plate re requirements. So I've left this disabled. If you live in an area where you do have front license plates and you only want to take pictures of the front and not the back, you can enable this and it's only going to recognize the vehicles that are approaching and it's only gonna take the license plate image on the front of the car. Under the snapshot handling menu, you can determine whether or not you want a passing record of vehicles where the plate wasn't accurately detected. Uh, maybe the car didn't have a plate at all or maybe the LPR just had trouble reading it. If you have this selected, it's still going to uh, generate the record, add those cars to the database, and it's just gonna say it doesn't have a plate number. If you don't want those in your database, if you only want to have accurately recognized license plate numbers, uh, you can leave this unchecked, and the LPR will ignore any captures where it can't recognize the license plate. Uh, vehicle parameters, if you live in Australia, you can change that here. Otherwise, leave this on common, and you can enable vehicle color detection, which is pretty cool, uh, when it sends the information to the MVR. If you have this enabled, it will also tell the MVR what color the car was. This is super helpful if you know basic characteristics of a car, you're looking for a red Jeep Grand Cherokee, you can jump into your MVR and filter all your results by red vehicles. This isn't 100% perfect. Depending on the lighting outside, depending on your video settings, it could generate some faulty reports. So don't completely rely on this, uh, but it's there. It works most of the time and it's pretty cool. Finally, we have our vehicle list. And what we can do here is upload a, a white list or a black list. A white list is gonna be a list of plates that are allowed to drive on your property. Black list, a list of plates that aren't allowed to drive on your property. And if you have this set up with some kind of access control gate so that someone can drive up to the gate, their license plate is captured by the LPR, and uh, you can either grant access or not based on the license plate number, uh, these lists can be helpful for that. Again, we have not tested this functionality, so use it at your own risk. If you do happen to try this out with induction loops as your trigger or uh, integrating this with with your uh, gate access control, let us know how it went. We would definitely be interested uh, in hearing your experience with that. And with that, that is everything that I'm going to do here on the LPR side. Now let's focus on getting this added to our NVR because that's really where the magic is gonna happen. As you can see, we did have two records here from my car and from another car. After playing around in the setup menus for a little bit, we came back and these records are gone. Uh, if I click refresh, log in again, you can see that even our most recent capture over here is gone. All of the data here is collected locally in this browser. This table will only populate as long as your browser is open. And the second you close your browser, refresh your browser, hop into the setup menu, all of that data is gone. So if you really wanna get the most out of this camera, you need an NVR. So let's hop over to our NVR 30416X, click on camera. And the first thing we're going to do is just add the camera to our NVR like we normally would. Let's add it by IP address. The protocol is Uniview. The IP address is .164. Put in your username and your password and click save. Now it's going to pull that camera into the NVR. We have a hard drive in this NVR. So as soon as it pulls this camera in, it's gonna start recording footage just like normal. And here we go, our LPR is now set up on our NVR. 
it's recording, everything is looking great. But at this point, it's only recording the live stream of the LPR. It's not actually pulling in any of the plate data. So to do that, we're going to need to set up our photo server. On the LPR side, hop into setup. We're gonna to go to system and we're going to go to photo server. The server IP address is going to be the IP address of your NVR, which again, this is why it's really important to make sure your IP address is set to static. So it always knows where to look for the server. Server port, we can leave at 5073. Video and image database is what we want. Let's put this on the most recent database. Let's go ahead and put in the username and password of our NVR, which is admin. The password is gonna go right here in access code. And uh, we need to confirm that. Perfect. Now let's talk about this device ID. Uh, if you come into our configuration guide here, you can see that for uh, device ID, uh, we need a 20 digit number that is unique and it needs to have uh, 119 in the digits 11 through 13. So it's a little fiddly, but uh, let's do this. One through 20 digits. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then we need 119 for 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There we go, 20 digits, a unique device ID. We are going to click save. Down here, we can see our photo server. Uh, the indicator is red, telling us it's offline. That's because the photo server has not been configured on the NVR just yet. Before I do that, I am gonna hop into the time menu and I actually want to sync this uh, with my computer time. And uh, the reason for that is we need to make sure that the LPR and the NVR are on the exact same time code so that the snapshot from the LPR and the video recording from the NVR line up. Otherwise, when you get in and start searching for vehicles and filtering things out, it's gonna look a little bit messy. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into our NVR setup menu. The first thing that we need to do is come to platform, video and image database, and we need to turn this on. The server address is gonna be the same IP address as our NVR, which is also the same IP address we put in uh, to the LPR. Server port, let's check out our handy dandy guide. The server port needs to be 5073, which is exactly what it was on the LPR2, so 5073. Username and password is gonna be the username and password of your NVR. All right, so our photo server on the NVR is set up. The LPR is pointed to that photo server. All we need to do now is to configure this VIID. And for this, our local ID is exactly like the device ID on the LPR. It needs to be a unique 20 character number, but this time instead of 119, digits 11 through 13 need to be 120, which you can see it already is. So we don't actually need to edit this. This is looking good. All right, one more thing that we need to do is tell the NVR that it's going to be receiving license plate data from the LPR. For that, it needs to know where the LPR is. Right now, our LPR is set up on channel one, this D1 channel here. The channel ID is going to be this crazy 20 digit number that we set up in the previous step. So I'm going to control C and control V, paste that in there, and now it should be good to go. I'm gonna hit save and everything is just going to work. Fingers crossed. I'm going to uh, click back into here just so it has time to refresh. And here we go. If we look at our status indicator, we now have this camera online. And if we hop back to our LPR tab and check out our photo server indicator, it is now green. Everything should be in good working order now. So I'm going to give this a rest, allow the LPR and NVR to collect a few entries. So I'm gonna flash forward a couple of hours and we're gonna jump on the NVR HDMI interface. All right, it's been a couple of hours now. Let's pull this up and see what we have. I am looking at the live feed right here on our uh, NVR 304-16X. This is the HDMI interface. Depending on what NVR you're using, it could look a little bit different. I will show a list here on the screen of all Uniview NVRs that are compatible with this ANPR technology. All right, with that, we can take a look over on the side here and we can see just from the last few hours, we've gotten quite a few license plate captures. These are all really high quality, uh, really accurate. Uh, I don't see any false plates here and the text recognition works like a charm. 
It has correctly identified all of these plate numbers. If we click on one, we can see that it's going to enlarge it. And from here, we can see a recorded video of the capture as it happened, as well as this snapshot and all of the plate information down here. Uh, in order to see this on the live view, you have to make sure that you are in the smart preview mode and not the normal preview mode. Uh, all you have to do is right click, go down to preview mode and click smart. Just like the web browser, all of this data is stored locally. So if I were to turn this NVR off and turn it back on, uh, this list right here on the live view would reset. However, since our photo server is set up, it is currently saving all of this information to the hard drive as well. So to access the information saved on the hard drive, we can jump into the menu, go to VCA search, click vehicle search, and we can search for license plates from here. We can choose a start date and an end date. We can look for specific license plate numbers. We can filter for different colors. And when we click search here, it's going to pull up all of our past records that fit this criteria. So you can see here are all of my captures from today. Again, you can click this, check out the video clip, see the snapshot, view all of the plate information. It's a really powerful tool. And as you can see, it's really accurate, efficient, and all around just a great solution for license plate capture. Another way you can search and retrieve license plates is through Univu's Easy Station. Now again, this is a newer feature, so make sure you have the latest version downloaded from our website. With Easy Station, all you have to do is go into your control panel, click in the Smart tab, select LPR, navigate to your NVR, choose your date range, and hit search. It's quick and easy and can be done anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection and your NVR set up with Easy Cloud. That's it for this video, you guys. I hope it was helpful. If it was still a little bit too overwhelming and you're not quite sure how to set this up, feel free to give us a call anytime. Send us an email. We're always happy to help you guys out. Happy installing and we will catch you in the next video.